Good morning, good morning. It's Allie with Allie Oops Market House. That's the page I'm on right now. I'm also with Allie Oops Boutique, just in case you um, are new or don't know who I am. Um, I am going to do a little project with you this morning because I am still so excited about our new paint line that we have in the studio, and it is called, Re oh, look, I'm throwing stuff. And it may be the color I need, <laughs> so I'm going to have to bend down and get it. Um, Rethunk Junk Resin Paint. This paint is a game changer, especially for people who are um, not the best painters like me. Like when it comes to furniture, cabinetry, things that you really need to do well, um, but you maybe not are a pro at it. Um, this paint has... it. Uh, the adhering qualities are amazing. The prep, now you always, there are different, um, what am I saying, uh, certain situations that you have to sand and scuff. There's no way around it. No paint out there is a miracle worker from, for some situations. But this paint, I've had customers paint their tile, their kitchen cabinets, all their furniture. I had one customer who painted basically her entire kitchen and dining room area for uh, an event she was having at her home and it all is holding up really well. So this paint, super, super easy. If you are painting on um, over something, you're gonna wanna use, um, and I'm gonna grab my paint real quick because um, that was a color I needed and you're gonna to wanna to use the prep. So this prep is super easy because you don't have to rinse it. You spray it on and wipe it off and then your piece should be ready to go. You can actually see videos, um, and I may produce one on my own, but um, where she has cleaned a piece and you actually see where the shine of it is diminished and it's it's obviously ready to go. It's kind of like a you know scuffing up with the prep. So you always want to use the prep and um, before you do your pro, uh, painting project. Now and then from there, you just start painting on most things. I will say again, there are some enamel paints and varnishes and things like that that you really just need to strip. I hate to say that word, or you need to sand. However, the majority of things out there, you're gonna be able to clean with the prep really well, and then just paint with your rethunk jump. So it's a That's my little girl calling me. I hope she'll see that I'm live and I'll call her right back or she can call her daddy. Um, all right, well, she's not little anymore. She's 28. So today I'm going to do a, um, I'm pouring all my beads out. I'm going to do <clears throat> this little tray. Now it is raw wood. It's from the dollar. Oh, that little speckles of something in it. It's from the dollar tree, which is actually now the dollar and up tree. But, um, and I don't know how they're going to rebrand that, but um, because everything I think is more than a dollar now, but, um, regardless this, I want to say it was either three or $5. It's just a basic little tray. So I'm going to be, um, transforming this tray this morning and I'm going to do it using my refunk junk resin paint. And we have all the colors in our studio and I will, after this video, drop a link, but um we're going to be using that and then i'm also going to be using an iod transfer which i love 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 lots of um beautiful transfers available in this packet and what i like about this are these are some smalls so like if you're wanting to do some things to sell at a craft show or just some little small item um transfers to do um for your tiered tray just little shelf sitters. This is an excellent pack to get. So this is called, um, oh my gosh, I can never say this word when I want to say it. Ephemeral. 
melange. Hey, Rick, um, excuse me one second. Did Bethany call you? No. You might want to check in with her. She tried to call me, and I'm on a live. <laughs> if it's an emergency, she would call her dad. But anyway, um, this is great if you have little smalls that you want to do, or if you're doing, like I said, a craft show, and you want some of those little things that are $10, $15, $20. This would be really great if you, um, look, I have all this stuff at hand. These little canvases that are very inexpensive, you could do a reverse can uh, canvas situation, which I've done a video on that, but I may have to do another one and then put one of these. So let's take a look. I'm just going to open it up. Why not? And it comes with your little stick that we're going to use today. Um, and this is, oh, I didn't price this one. I'll drop a link in case you want them. We have a few in the studio. But the book, it says eight sheets that are eight by 12. So you get this one, which is perfect for a tray. This one, they resemble old um, seed pack labels. Oh, I love this one. If you like a Victorian theme, um, these are great. These are the littles I'm talking about. So these can go on little canvases. They can go on little, um, another thing I like to do is I'll show you. We have these little baseboard, like little trim pieces. Now this one is decoupaged, but you could put these little um, seed packs on that. You can do so much with these littles. I'm calling them littles, but whatever you wanna call them. Um, there's some more, super pretty. These would be perfect for that little five by seven canvas because you can put transfers on fabric, canvas, wood, metal, whatever you like. These are some beautiful ones. So these are just fun. If you're getting into the world of um, transfers, they're easy, they're fun, and um, this would be a great one to start with if you like that Victorian garden, vintage garden seed pack look. So this is what we're going to use today. So I've got this beautiful rose. Well, the ring light is kind of... Um, shining on it but this beautiful rose transfer and because you need your paint to be dry before you put your transfer on you I went ahead and painted the interior but what I'm going to do today is I'm going to paint the outside with some rethunk junk a different color so I'm going to go ahead and lay my transfer down right here on the video and then I'm going to um Add some really cute wooden beads along the edge, and then I'm going to paint the edge. All right, so what is a transfer? A transfer is an image that is, hmm, I should have read before I um, got on here, but it's kind of like a vinyl, but it's a printed image that will be permanent once it's sealed on your piece. And so it has a protective backing that is on there. So when you get it, you're gonna peel, and you don't wanna do this until you're ready to lay it down. But I made sure that this fits perfectly in this piece, which is awesome, because you can run to the dollar store, grab a few of these. There's several of this size in the um, ephemeral melange, I guess is how it said. Ugh, I don't know. Um, have I said that right? But um, it's perfect. You could do several trays. You can sell them for, I don't know, 15, 20 bucks. Who knows? I mean, it's your time that people are paying for, your time and your product. So anyway, I peeled off the protective backing and I'm just laying it in there because it is literally, y'all, a perfect fit. So I'm going to take my little um, tool to burnish this image onto, um, oh, it's already starting to pull up. So you really shouldn't, with a good quality transfer, you should not, and I'm gonna move my camera down a little bit. You should not have to really struggle. Like some transfers I've used, oh, Lord have mercy. I have um, gotten, now I need an arm workout for sure, but I've gotten a workout from, um, just rubbing a dang transfer on but anyway no complaint I should not complain 
So um, anyway, I am rubbing this transfer and I've picked up my edge and I'm gonna just gently pull as I rub and just make sure. And if for some reason you pull up and the image is still on the, um, as, is it, oh, is it acetate paper? Um, anyway, if it's still on the paper, just lay it back down, rub a little bit more and um, then that image should release. But you don't want any of the image left on the um, transfer paper. You want to be sure you lay it back down because you don't want to pull any of the image up. You want it all to be on the piece that you are applying it to. Now, when you do a canvas, if you don't do a reverse canvas, I'll tell you, you want a flat surface to rub um, or burnish the transfer to. So you may have to put a little something underneath there if you leave the canvas as is. If you reverse it, you can obviously, it'll be on a piece, um, you know, on the table. But if you're going to leave it as is, I would suggest putting something in there to give it something to rub against. So, or if you're doing a piece of um, like a bag, like a tote bag or something, um, you know, put something in between to give a harder surface to rub your transfer on. All right, so I am just rub, 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 rubbing, burnishing, burnishing. And it's already beginning. You can see how it begins to let loose. It turns kind of milky white. Um, we had transfers when I was growing Now, they weren't this quality, but when I was growing up, I loved transfers. They were little, like, coloring books and stuff and sheets that you would get, and you would rub the transfers on. I don't know if any of y'all remember that, but um, I loved doing them. The other thing I loved to do were these... Um, you had this board that was like a scene and they were like little magnetic, but they were vinyl, but they were kind of magnetic and they were storyboards. And um, you could move your um, stuff around. Sometimes they had like clothes that you could put on top of them, uh, uh, on top of the little dolls. I forget what they were called, but they were pretty cool. They probably still make, I think they do still make them because I think I've seen them at market. a little something there. What did I miss? Okay, since this is a perfect fit, I just plop it right back down and it goes right, it evens right up. Um, a lot of times we're not so lucky because it's not on a perfect fit, but I was able to just plop it right back down and it would even right up. This little piece that I pulled up before it was ready. All right, up oh, one more. So normally you would have to line it back up so be real careful. I'm being a little hasty. Sometimes on a live, I get a little hasty, but so there's nothing left. You see how that image, there's nothing left of that image. And these are great to save, to reuse, to put them. Um, I was watching a, a young lady on a video. She puts them up against the edge of frames. So instead of taping off, you tuck it under when you're painting a frame, keeps it off your glass, all kinds of fun stuff. But you guys, look how beautiful this is. Do you love that? So pretty, and I love the combination of color. I say, okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is I picked up, there's some blue-ish green, like right in here, and I thought this color is perfect to pick up the accent color, so that's what I'm gonna paint on the outside, okay? But first, um, I should have been heating up my, well, it's a good time for a little sip of coffee. All right. So um, another good thing these are great for is um, I'm going to cut a little piece right now to catch your drippings from your glue gun. Either one, this one or um, the other sheet is excellent for that. So I'm just gonna put it right here to catch my drippings from my glue. 
and we're gonna hope that my glue gun battery holds out because I didn't check to see um, if it was charged fully. But the next thing I'm gonna do, now I do wanna say I'm gonna kind of rub this gently down with my hands, make sure there's no air bubbles, everything looks good, and I will seal it with a clear coat. Um, we have a couple different options, some wax, you can seal it with wax, you can seal it with a clear top coat, whatever you like. Um, so I will seal that later. But for now, we are going to wait on my little trusty glue gun. And we are going to, while we wait, I'm going to go ahead and put my beads here so I know how many. Um, and if you have any questions um, about what I'm doing, please feel free to ask them. Ask about the transfers, ask about the paint, whatever. And um, even if you watch this video later, which so often happens, um, I we were just talking about that, me and Bethany, the other day. We rarely watch a video while it's live. <laughs> And part of that is we don't really want anybody calling us out, um, asking us questions, blah, blah, blah. I know that's weird, but, and it's so crazy that I feel that way because I want people on my lives and I want people to respond and to ask questions and I want to say hey to people on my live, but yet me and Bethany hardly watch lives. In while they're going on so a lot of people will just watch later and that's perfectly fine um, for me today I hope y'all are having a beautiful day it is absolutely gorgeous outside Bethany said it was supposed to get a little warm um, I've got some spray painting to do so I hope it doesn't get too warm but um, which is where I'm heading next but I had a lot of videos that I need to film today for blogs and such and this has been one that's been sitting on my craft table this project and I've got to get it done so um, I am, you know, I stopped what I was doing. I did some things this morning that I needed to um, check off my list. And so the very next thing was this to go live and do this project with y'all. So I hope you're having a beautiful day. Um, and you are, I hope you're crafting. I hope you're having a blast. It's, it's heating up, guys. I've got my, um, so let's go ahead and count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So I need 13 for the other side. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 for the um, other side. And then we'll um, count this in just a moment. But I'm gonna use hot glue on this today um, because it's fast and easy. Now, if you're gonna do this at home and you um, have plenty of time, I would encourage you to use wood glue and um, tape it down because wood glue is, I believe, the best option for gluing wood beads. But certainly hot glue will hang in there. We've done all through the 80s tons of things with hot glue and the hot glue that they have now is so much better quality than what we ever dreamed of in the 80s, I think, um, from just using it. So I am now gluing beads. I love these beaded trays that are so on trend right now. Um, it just adds a little um, shape and texture to just a plain, ordinary piece. You can add beads to just about anything. The half beads that we use, we get just straight from Amazon. Um, is gonna be your most economical, especially if you are a um, hobbyist, a crafter, and you do craft shows, this is going to be your best option for getting these little half beads. And just price them out. Now this little tray that I'm doing, I could certainly add feet, little pedestal feet to it, and it would be adorable. And I'm just being careful. Oh, look, I glued my finger. And it wasn't that hot, so no worries. But um, I'm being careful to keep it flush with the 
edge of the tray. So I'm going to set it down when I'm done just to be sure I've done that properly and it sits. It may be that I have to put pedestal feet on it because I have um, it's not gotten it quite flush. And if you are re-watching it, you can obviously speed through this process, but this is the fun thing about live is just crafting with people and if you're on watching and I can chat with folks, that's great. If not, I am crafting by myself, but I am um, accomplishing something because I am getting something off of my craft table that is full of um, potential projects. And I have this adorable birdhouse project that... I am going to work on today as well. And that will be a pre-recorded video, I believe. All right, so let me set it down. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so see, I've got these beads on this tray. Is that not so beautiful? And in that color that I'm going to paint it, it's going to be absolutely gorgeous. All right, so let's do the next ones. Um, this one, I'm just gonna have to wing it because it can't sit flush. So let's see. Um, I'm just going to do this. All right. So what are y'all up to today on this beautiful day? I know that there are several of our customers that are at the beach. Um, last week when I was talking to some folks, they said, and over the weekend, I'd always ask people what big plans they have. And um, because I'm interested in what's going on in other people's lives, and um, several people said they were headed to the beach this week. So I know the beach is going to be a busy place over the next few weeks, and I hope to go myself as well. We have family in St. Pete, Florida. That is where I grew up, and um, we are have plans to go and see them soon. So. That's going to be exciting. All right. So this is just a, you know, a little time consuming, but not too bad. We um, are rolling right through it. I remember um, I placed my beads on the side too, and I think they over went over the edge just a smidge, but that's okay. Um, you won't even notice it. But this is great when this works out. It's like serendipity. When you have just, the beads are just the right size and the tray or whatever you're putting the beads on and it works out perfectly. They don't hang over. They um, fit just right. That is a crafter's dream, right? All right, so. But I was just so excited about our new paint line that I really wanted to um, show you something done with it. I've shown, I've shown a few things, you know, in the studio, but I really wanted to just go live and show y'all what it can do and what it looks like. So a couple of things that I love about the Rethunk Jump, aside from the fact that it adheres so well to items and um, uh, it's so durable. It also has, unlike chalk paint, it has a little bit of a sheen to it. Um, it might be hard to see on the video, but it has almost like a satin um, or eggshell finish rather than a chalky flat finish. And I do love that um, look for a lot of the things that I do um, because I am always sealing um, or doing a top coat on my chalk paint because I don't really love that chalky. But there's no need to do that with Rethunk Junk. It already has that little shine in it. All right, so I'm going to see how many we need on this. And the reason I am doing my beads first, obviously, is they will be so much easier to paint when they are on the tray 
And also, sometimes you get little glue, little glue globs coming out from them. And um, so you can just paint right over those, it won't matter. All right, so I need to do that on the edge and that right on the edge. Oh. And that's why you want to, before you start gluing, just place your beads so you kind of know where they need to be. Now the glue gun is really heating up. All right. Now these little beads, I've taken um, reverse canvas projects, and I may go get one and show you. Whoop, that got my finger. Um, something I've done, but um, for my Etsy shop, and I haven't posted it yet. But they're fun to get the little beads and glue them on frames, around frames to add that uh, element, um, some shape, texture. The other thing that I'm going to play around with are bamboo sticks. I've seen some people using bamboo sticks to um, embellish the fronts of drawers and such. And so I grabbed me some the other day and I'm going to try it on a, I have an old cabinet door that I can play around with. But using these wooden shapes to embellish your, uh -oh, we'll just get another one. We'll be sure to get that one up so the grandbaby doesn't grab it. He loves this office and it's so not child friendly. There's tons of stuff here and there that he does not need to get into and I guess that's why it's so exciting to him because he looks around and Gaga's um at Gaga's stash of all this fun stuff and he gets so excited. All right, so we need nine, two, four, six, eight, nine. All right, so we're gonna go in and I'm just going to place them on there. Well, I really can't so much. So we're going to try because I, um, kind of need to be sure that my spacing is right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push these beads out of the way and I'm going to use another project that I have. Maybe can kind of hold up. I think it can hold it up for me a little bit. Yeah. All right. See? Ingenuity, right? Um, is that what that is? Ingenuity? Ah! Maybe not. <laughs> Let's see. We can make it work. Maybe I will um, use this. Oh, I see. It's because it's the beads, duh. Let's see if I can bear with me. All I need is for it to stand up for just a bit. Maybe that'll work. Okay. Now, I hope my daughter was not calling me in to go into the store today and I ignored her, but we'll see. I had planned a day of blogging and vlogging, videoing, and all the things, which Take some time. And last night we did. Uh -oh. well, I think I'm good now, so I'll just leave it. Um, there's gonna be beads all over the floor I have to pick up. Um, last night we did our first paid um, workshop online at Market House, and it was a lot of fun. It was a great video. I um the lighting was good, the setup was good. You know, those are the things that 
your first go round, you really are trying to work through all those bumps. We had good participation. And y'all, I got done. And first of all, it was a paid event, so it wasn't something that was just supposed to be on our public page because people paid to attend it. And I posted it to the wrong page, I mean, public. So, and I realized it on my way home. So when I got home, I kind of panicked and I was trying to, um, get it off of there. And y'all, I deleted the video. So today, another thing that I'm going to have to do is repaint my summer hydrangeas on a video so that my paying customers will have it to rewatch as I promised. And I hate that because I mean, I, I, lo I love to do it and I'll do it just fine. But um, I hate that I deleted it because it was such a good video and I had a studio guest and we were having a great time and oh, I deleted it. So lesson learned. First time for everything. Okay, so beautiful beads, the tray lace flat, so gorgeous. What do y'all think of that? Do you love the beads on it? If so, when you're watching it, comment and tell me if you love the element of the bead. All right, so now I actually kind of like the raw wood look. That's beautiful, and you certainly could do raw wood. You could stain it. I think I'm going to run to the Dollar Tree and get more of these frames if y'all don't beat me to it and they get sold out. Okay, next thing. We're going to paint Seaside as the color. And I chose it because it's right in here, that little bit of that beachy seaside blue, green, blue, green. Ugh, there we go. All right, so with the Rethunk Junk paint as, oh, what I was going to say, and I might not have, if I did, forgive me for repeating myself, but with this raw wood, there's really not any need, of, unless it's dusty, to use the prep on it, um, but you certainly can. And then, um, so I, I did mean to say that, and I think I got off on some other tangent and forgot. All right, so now I'm going to paint the outside this beautiful seaside blue-green. So I'm going to get kind of a one inch brush. This is not a large piece and I'm going to gently brush up so that I don't go over the edge because I did paint that inside edge that pretty, um, it's called grassland. It's rethunk jump grassland in case you want to recreate this. Um, and I'm brushing up in a way so that I don't get it on the inside edge. Oh, I love this color. This color, I was secretly thinking about painting my base cabinets in my kitchen. But if I even mention the word painting my kitchen, my husband might, what do they say, have a come apart? I don't know. He might. And I might because as I said earlier, I am not a huge fan of painting um, cabinetry. All right. Now I'm just getting down. Might need a smaller brush, but I'm just getting down in these little grooves. That's why I chose this one inch. And I might need a little smaller one, but I want to get down in there, in between. I hope y'all can see what I'm doing. Now this paint is absolutely amazing. I will say this, like you're not going to see it so much because this is raw wood and it is literally just drinking up this paint. However, when you go to paint a piece of furniture with Rethunk Junk, um, your first coat 
is going to look terrible. It will look, you want it to be thin. And to you, you may think, oh, this is the most horrible looking coat of paint I've ever done. And that is a perfect first coat of Rethunk Junk. So she has some videos. Laura is the one who created Rethunk Junk Paint, her and her husband. And she has some videos that will show you what a perfect first coat of Rethunk Junk looks like. But a perfect first coat is not completely covered and it is a thin coat. It might even look streaky, but that's okay because your second thin coat is going to make it look even better. And as I tell people, sometimes you need a third coat. However, you're not going to use a ton of the paint because you're supposed to be doing thin, look at that, I got glue spider webs. You're supposed to be doing thin coats. So there's that. I got this spider web, this glue spider web. There it goes. Stuck to me. All right. So I'm just getting in the little grooves, but this color, oh my goodness. It is absolutely gorgeous. So I <laughs> I mentioned my kitchen. I'll just chat while I um, paint. See how pretty? And that adds just an additional color. And I may go back and paint this inside um, ledge, that blue. What do y'all think? If you comment, if you're um, watching this on the replay, comment if you think I should paint that inside um, the seaside green blue. All right. So I'm just painting, painting, painting. Anyway, um, I <laughs> oftentimes when I reorder supplies and paint for the studio, it's late at night or early in the morning before my coffee has really had a chance to sink in. And, um, we had an order come in and y'all we order to sell typically eight ounce and 16 ounce of the paint um, this particular brand of paint and so I ordered what I thought was four 16 ounce jars of paint in this particular color and thank God it's a color that I like and I use. But y'all, <laughs> I accidentally pushed gallon. So I got four gallons of this particular color. Um, and I am hoping that they will be kind and let me exchange it. However, if they don't... That may be what I'm painting my upper kitchen cabinets in. Crazy that I did that. I can't believe I did that. Yes, I can. I can believe it. All right. I hope y'all can see all that I'm doing. I'm just getting into the grooves. Getting all that paint in there. I think I am going to go paint that ledge just to kind of frame it out a bit. And I was thinking about distressing it just a smidge. I'm either going to distress it or use some white wax on it when it dries. And I'll post a picture of my finished pro project, but we'll get the most of it done today on the video. Oh, 
All right. So next up. And I'm guessing I probably need to start laying it down. So let's go down just a bit and we will, I don't want to, I noticed I pressed against this. See on this, I'm sure I've done it on some video. I know I've spilt things, but that has spilt an entire, um, thing of water, their print paintbrush water on their work of art that their piece of art they were painting on the video. And that was pretty distressing um, knowing how that must feel. So we're going to just continue to paint, paint, paint. All my wood beads everywhere. I have ADD. I do think I like that ledge. What do y'all think about that? To paint that blue. I like that. Blue green, whatever color this is, but whatever color it is, it's absolutely gorgeous. So like I said, this would be a perfect inexpensive I'm not sure I can't remember I have priced them out the little half beads like what the cost of um, that what they are individually so that we could price our merchandise and our project our craft projects at the studio but I can't off the top of my head remember what they were each however for very little, you know, the tray, if it's three, five dollars, three or five dollars, whatever it is, and then your beads, um, you know, if they cost a couple bucks, however many beads you end up using, so that would be around seven dollars. And then if you sell this tray for fifteen or twenty dollars in a um, little craft show, you know, that's pretty good markup. You should be able to assembly line these um, pretty easily, and they're just great gifts. Or, speaking of gifts, we have teacher appreciation coming up, and if you have a little bit of time that you could work on something like that, these are excellent. You could get, let's see, your, um, your, transfers we can get one two three four five six six one two three four so four um full size this size and there's a ton there's four other pages four other pages of littles but you can do four trays um with this packet and then just grab you some beads. You don't even have to put the beads on them. Teachers love things like this. Um, these are, and you could get your child to help with these. But these are just beautiful. All right. Let me see. And this paint does, I would say it takes a little longer to dry than our typical chalk paint, but not much. It dries pretty fast. And um, like I said, it will dry with a little bit of a sheen to it, which is probably, aside from the fact that there is so little prep necessary, it's probably one of my favorite things about it. All right. Now I have a little touch-up work to do, and I'm going to touch the insides and turn it around, and I'm going to do this um, last side.
and I'm using a brush that is, you know, kind of old um, so that I can get down, kind of push the paint down into the grooves. Uh, let's see. This one I'm gonna have to turn over. I'm gonna have to wait till some of that dries. And paint this edge. <laughs> that was the hubby. I think he's about ready to do his laundry he fusses at me because i don't i'm not the best launderer i don't catch stains right away and if you let us something dry with a stain on it well then it's pretty much on there right so and he's pretty particular so he's gonna try to undo the damage that i've done to some of his little clothes. All right. Beautiful. Love it. Okay. So let's let that dry for just a bit. But you can already see like this edge that is dry. See that little bit of sheen? And I hope the light's catching it, but it's got a little bit of sheen. So what do y'all think about this tray so far? So what I'm going to do is I absolutely love it and I don't want to mess it up because it's still kind of wet, but I am going to seal my transfer. I'm going to touch up that bottom there when I can, um, when some of it dries. Um, I'm going to go in and touch it up and I don't know I may not distress it we'll see I'll post a finished picture but I just wanted to spend a little time with you today show you what you can do by adding just wooden half beads embellishments um, show you what our new paint line rethunk junk can do it is absolutely wonderful we will be doing free demos in the studio, so I hope that you, you will join us. And I also wanted to, um, I'll post a picture of how you can do the reverse canvas and embellish those frames with beads, so, or half beads. Or you can do, I've seen people do the whole round wood beads on pieces rather than half beads. But this was my project for today. I am so happy that I finished it. It looks amazing. I will post all the links once I drop, um, you know, get off this video of our transfer that you can purchase. And if I can find the bead link on Amazon, I will share that with you. And then the link to the colors that I used in Rethunk Junk. But if you have any questions and you're watching this on a replay, please ask them. I would love to answer your questions about our new paint. And um, I hope that if you're local, you'll join us in the studio, Alley Oops Market House, Mercantile and DIY Studio. And um, you can check us out. I'll put our website in the comments. And Alley Oops Boutique, you can join us there. You can go to alleyoops.com and you can see that. And you can get a direct link to our um, Market House, Mercantile and DIY studio where we sell all these fabulous products and we do DIY videos and have lots of fun. We have in-studio workshops and stuff like that. So I hope that you will dig a little deeper, check out our website, ask any questions and um, happy, happy DIYing. Have a great day.